We have come to the part of the story where the young beauty has fallen deeply in love with an enigmatic and charming man. His family had deep roots in Philadelphia society and maintained a stately home there. She moves from her home into his sphere of influence. Once settled into the cold rooms of the elegant mansion, it becomes clear to the heroine that her independent thinking, her intelligence, and her talent are undervalued. She becomes isolated from her former friends and begins to find her situation intolerable. Even the joy of having two little girls only increases her misery because fear of losing them tightens the binds that keep her imprisoned in her gilded palace, controlled by societal pressures, made poor by her inability to work, and facing the scorn of the world. Her husband begins to submit her to intolerable cruelty, being unfaithful, living frivolously, squandering the family fortune. Her humiliation complete, she takes refuge in flight and settles in Lenox, Massachusetts, building a charming home for herself called The Perch. This is where our heroine's story takes an interesting turn. Fanny had retired from the stage to please her husband and his family, but was able to return to the recitation of Shakespeare as a source of funds for her new independent life. But this is not her only talent, for Fanny Campbell was a writer, and the story that she had to tell was a very important one. Fanny's friendship with Catherine Sedgwick had led to another close friendship with Catherine's sister-in-law, Elizabeth. While Fanny was enduring her life in Philadelphia and later at the plantation in Georgia, she kept up a regular correspondence with Elizabeth. She described her isolation and unhappiness in openness and detail. These letters, along with the journals that she kept, were to become the basis of her most important literary work called Journal of a Residence on a Georgia plantation. This, in this book, Fanny described her life when she left the family home in Philadelphia for the plantation in Georgia. Um, important and horrible details about the misery of the slaves, the lives of the slaves, were exposed to her. She was the first person to reveal through first-hand evidence the system of concubinage, describing having met many female slaves who had tried to please the master by having many children. She recorded the shocking infant mortality rate amongst the slaves. She described the cruelty of forcing of the mothers to return to work in the fields after three weeks of giving birth. The publication of Fanny's book hit the free states by storm. It was read in the House of Commons in England, which may have led to British neutrality during the American Civil War. This neutrality was, this neutrality was vital to the North's ultimate success, and indeed, I think it should be credited as having shortened the duration of that terrible war. Naturally, the Butler family stood behind the sun throughout unwanted publicity associated with the publication and also through the ugly divorce which followed. But Lennox supported Fanny through the ordeal. She loved the town and its inhabitants and they loved her. Meanwhile, back in Georgia, her husband followed up on every cruelty in his pursuit of divorce and separated Fanny from her beloved children. By law, the children, under their father's direction, 
had limited contact with their mother until each turned 21. When they reached that age, they freely chose to embrace Fanny as their beloved mother. Thus, her biggest remorse was made right and her happiness made complete. She moved to Europe in her later years, engaging in the literary society and treasuring time spent in the company of her daughters. And it has been said that she was still climbing the Alps well into her 70th year.